Now, okay, there we go. There's sine. Cosine, on the other hand, is just the x value over the radius. And then tangent is y over x, all right? It's this value over that value. And it's undefined at x equals 0, and we'll see why that is uh, down the line. Uh, there are inverse uh, functions here. So y over r is sine. r over y is called the cosecant, and that has a, point, a place where it's undefined. Uh, secant and cotangent are just the reciprocals of cosine and uh, tangent. All right? So these are just some definitions that we have for the trigonometric function. And we're going we're gonna, to uh, expand upon this here. So one way that you can remember this is Sokotoa. You guys indicated you've all had Sokotoa in the past. Uh, and it just stands for sine equal for any angle, uh, in some angle uh, that you want to get uh, the sine function of. It's just equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Because remember, it was y over r. You guys following this? Keep it straightforward. Cosine is just the adjacent side to the angle over the hypotenuse. Uh, that's the ka. And then toa is just opposite over adjacent. So ka toa. And you can remember so ka toa. Uh, some old hippie came a hopping through our apartment. That is not that how. Shirt. Huh? I want that shirt. Yeah, well, it's online. You can find it. That's not how I uh, w remember being taught. It was some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid, is what mm -hmm. I. Uh, remember, but um, any of these, any of these works. Just Sokotoa is is good enough. All right. So um, this slide indicates that this is a, an opportunity to gain house points, and I may I must have screwed this up somehow. I did. I don't know how I I did that. But uh, it said, I meant to not have this part up here, and you were going to draw it in, but it, it didn't. Uh, but it says that there's some point that goes through 815. Uh, some point, uh, a line goes through point 815. What is the length of uh, that R? The, what's the length of from the origin to that uh, point? So. This picture is depicting the theta, and um, that point is obviously 8 along the x-axis, 15 along the y, so the x and the y are, are known. So if you were, um, how would you go about finding out the different uh, values of the six trigonometric functions from this? You want to give it a shot? Well, I turn up the Okay. And how would you do that? Okay. Okay. So, you want to wanna do it? What's, what do you need? Huh? No, you don't. What's 8 times 8? What's 8 times 64. <laughs> okay. And what's 15 times 15? What's 10 times 15? What's half of that? 75. Wrong kind of help. So what's what's 75 plus 50, 150? 225. Okay, so that's 15 squared, right? And we're just going to add add those. So that would be 284 plus 5, 289. 289. And what's the square root of 289? Mm -hmm. 
So is it bigger or smaller than 15? Bigger. Bigger, all right. Um, and is it bigger or smaller than 20? Small, smaller. Um, which one is it closest to? What's, what's 20? 17. It is, in fact, 17. Yeah, 17. Yeah, so hold on a second here. We'll give, let's do it right now. Um, James, I'm going to give you uh, James give you five points and yeah, yeah, and Ashley for bravely stepping in with seventeen. Ashley, uh, we'll give you. We'll give you three. Yeah, why not? Okay. Points works. Okay, so seventeen is is what we got. All right, so that's the way to do it. So now we have the, th the three sides. Does anybody want to come up and fill out for me the, the six trigonometric functions? Ashley, again for Gryffindor. Yes. Uh, Hufflepuff. No, Hufflepuff. I'll take Gryffindor. This is more of an attempt. Um, Excuse oh, me, you're saying you're going to take her back for Gryffindor? Huh? You can take these numbers and then put them in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where do you want me to where do you want me to do that? It's right there on the other side of the equal sign. Two points. I'll give you two for each one you get right. Yes. Let's see. Does she get it? It's 12 points. 12 points for Hufflepuff. Wow. Is there I, think I thought you wanted us to do the number thing. Thing. At the end of class, we have like a golden snitch. Sure. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> Where is it? So like when they play Quidditch, they show like that game in the booth. Yeah. So like there's so there's like yeah. Sorry. There's like this really to protect they these like balls. Uh, twelve. And they release this really tiny little ball that has like a detachable like target. No, no, no. You get a hundred. I know, but like you pretty much. There were there were times in the books where the team would kick the Oh, well, you got the way. That's a lot. Yeah. But it makes the game work. Yeah. Does everybody follow what just happened there? Super yeah. super basic. Uh, the, the, the trigonometric function. Okay, so here's another opportunity. Uh, the terminal side of an angle theta in standard position passes through the point minus 3, minus 4. Find the values of the six trigonometric functions of that angle theta. Who wants to give it a shot? I'm going to give somebody else a chance because you already put your hand up. Anyone else want a chance? Okay. Another for Slytherin. Okay, so what's the first step here, Molly? Can I, can I draw the, um, the plane and put it up? Do it. Yeah, that's exactly what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can do it. I can do it with a freaking marker. Do it. Go for your marker first. You got this. All right. Um, I like to start here. So. Mm -hmm. 
3 minus 4. So, so a line passes through? Yeah, yeah. A terminal side of an angle in standard position, meaning that it goes through the origin. But is that actually uh, the point minus 3 minus 4? Oh. Here you go. I'm just going to redo the whole thing. All right. No problem. You do not need to apologize. You're doing it. You are up there earning points. Um, I have to write it out. That's, that's that. So, ka, so what? I'm old hippie, caught another hippie. Okay, so. <laughs> If I, sorry. <laughs> if I'm trying to, like, if I want to make, um, so draw your triangle first of all. Yeah, um, I, should I draw it this way or that way? Um, you draw from the point to the x-axis. There you go. Tripping on asphalt. That's it. Keeping in mind that it's minus three and minus four. But wouldn't but isn't the even though it's negative, wouldn't it be Because any negative value squared is gonna be a positive, of course. Yeah, so but even though it's minus three and minus four, if the length is still three units. Certainly it is. Certainly it is. Uh, but let's let's remind our let's be good about what we're doing here. And always not drop the negative sign because um, it will be convenient for us to have the negative sign. Yep. So you should be well familiar with this. You got one. Remember what we what we did last night? Uh, last, yeah, last time we took the area of the two sides, and so it was. Remember, it was the area here and the area of this square equals the area of that square. Yeah. How did we did we multiply those areas to get this area? When we go back to this picture. Here, right. Yeah. This was this was three. This area, and then this area uh, here, which was sixteen. So nine and sixteen. Do we take these two numbers and oh, multiply? Plus. There you Thank go. You. Sorry about that. There you go. But that would be would that be negative five? No, it, well it's it's a length of five. That's fine. Okay. So let's get those six functions. So I'm going from wait, I have a question. So if I so if I'm trying to find sine, like do I have to do that? To every side length. So it's this is the angle we're considering right here. Oh, right? the angle. This is the angle we're considering theta, and we want to know, um, yeah, what's the sine of this angle? So it's opposite, sine, opposite over hypotenuse. That's right. And it's right sine equals, so we know what you're looking at. And what are the other five? Cosine, tangent, and then, wait, I don't know what else. 
there the other three are cosecant, secant, oh, and, right, right, right. and cotangent. You're right like that, right? What's that? You're right like that? Yep. That's right. Secant. Wait, cosecant, what else? Secant, SEC, and cotangent. That's right. Are you an SEC fan or are you a football fan? I'm coming to you. You have to go over there. Isn't it the SEC fan? I don't know how. What's the abbreviation? COT. So, everybody else can check her. Everybody, does anybody feel like they wouldn't be able to do this? Yeah. So if I'm doing negative four over negative three, do I just keep? Do I keep the negative or? Do yeah, I just keep, keep the negatives in there, just to be, just like, just to remind yourself. Right? Because and the reason I made you keep them in there, you'll notice now that the value of sine, uh, if you just left it at four, it would have been four fifths. And actually, the value of sine, sine is negative uh, for that value of theta, right? So it would be a negative four fifths. Mm -hmm. um, and you guys remember what cosecant is? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That should give me two, two points for Gryffindor. James, that's that's like that's naughtier than my point system point. can handle. But. <laughs> Negative one point. There you are. Thanks. All right, let's see what she did. It looks like I'm gonna give. I'm giving 15 points to Slytherin. Yeah, can we get points in either? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. It's a real risk of this. Slytherin. I'm not sure if I can sign up for that one. 15 what points. So and then Gryffindor <laughs> is on the board. With two. With Mars. That's better than zero. Yeah. Lance, yeah. stop it. I'm going to kick you out of the That's my bad. All right. Crucio, that is <laughs> that is that definitely how points. that's naughty. Negative points. That's naughty. No, negative Lance. ten. Uh, we didn't establish that that was naughty, but we've established that, that be an using an unforgivable factor. curse is definitely oh, naughty. You're trying to curse me. <laughs> <laughs> that is ungryffindor like behavior, young man. The entirety of the. Well, there goes the <laughs> <notes. laughs> Yeah, I'm okay. Is, does everybody feel comfortable with that? I think you all do. We right. gotta get those wands that like those pens look like the wands. We wand. should actually do We gotta get scarves. Oh, <laughs> <dear. All right. laughs> Can we please the banner? <laughs> it's gone too far. So coming back to our flagpole, which is what I want to do. I want to get out of out of this classroom. Uh, what is a different way of measuring the height of the flagpole using trig functions? Please, somebody, a chance to get up and earn some points. Who wants to go for it? The question is, what is a different way of measuring the height of the flagpole using a trig function? Huh? I'll say it, you won't lose points. Right, but using a trig function. So that is that is the the Pythagorean theorem, James, and then the cosecant. Yeah. Okay. So uh, cosecant. It, yeah, cosecant would work. Uh, and what it, you tell me what you mean by that? How would you do it? Tell me. Use the second triangle to figure out how long the hypotenuse. So you say you say cosecant, and what is cosecant again? Let's let's call these let's call it uh, let's call it r, uh, y, and x, just so we can be uh, very clear about what we. Do. R over y. 
Yeah. Because <laughs> sine, cosecant is the opposite of sine, and sine is soa, opposite over hypotenuse, which would be y over r. Cosecant is the inverse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what you're telling me is now, and what would you actually measure in real terms? How would you do this? How would you measure the top of that flagpole? Did you think of how far away you were and you knew the angle and that you could figure out how uh, long the top of that flagpole was? Okay, so if you knew this distance, all right, you can figure out how, how far away you are, right? So you have x equals some number, all right? And then what? Angle MLN. And then uh, MLN, so this angle, let's call this theta. And we have theta equals some number in degrees. All right, and we'll just say this is in feet. All right. I'm still, uh, you're, you're so close. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're, you're so close, James. But cosecant isn't. The R over X one. And what is R over X? The other quadrant are lengths. Yeah, lengths. So sine is Y over R. Is that going to save us? Anybody else? Secant? Okay, so secant. What is secant? It's R over X. It's R over X. Now we're in the right area. Now we're in the right area, getting at least closer. And so let's 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 think about what secant does for us. Uh, we know we can walk out how far we are there to the flagpole, and we can measure the angle. Right? We have the goniometer. We can just figure out the angle to the. top of the flagpole. So for the some things, for example, cosecant of some degree theta angle is going to equal the ratio of r over y, right? So if we looked up this value of cosecant at that theta value, it would give us r over y, right? That could be useful, but we don't know r, and we don't know y. So cosecant doesn't seem like it's the right one, does it? What what do which of this functions do we need? I thought we could plug in the angle for sine, and that, or not sine uh, for. Let me let me let me help you think about it a little bit. What what do we know and what do we want to know? So we know the angle measurement of x. We want to know r. Do we want to know r? No, why why? We want to know why. We don't actually care what r is. But don't you know that r? No, no, we don't need it. That's what I'm trying to say. We plug in the angle and then we use a formula and we can plug in. We have two out of three unknowns or knowns. Yeah, we know x, we want to know y, we know x, and we know the angle, we want to know y, right? And so what is the trigonometric function that relates the angle to these two? What? Tangent. Tangent. And what's tangent? It's y over x, opposite over adjacent. So what we can do is look up the tangent of theta degrees... And that's going to give us the ratio of y over x, which is going to be some number. And we know what x is, so then we can just we can just solve for for y. So we got there, but we did that. I was dumb, and I put like I couldn't figure out which one it was, which function sine, cosine, and tangent. So I kept on trying sine and cosine, and getting that wrong. But that was like we got there, but we plugged in the wrong. Who's thoroughly confused? Wait, what's the Who's thoroughly confused? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> Never mind. I think that's a yes. <laughs> you, you're a little the confused. The answer is yes. Okay. 
what we're trying to do here is use these trigonometric functions to figure out a way to come up with the, the height of a flagpole. We can easily measure the angle, which is why it's convenient to use a trigonometric function. And we can also pace out how far it is to the base of the flagpole. Or look at the shadow, for example. All right, and, and see how long that shadow is, and then what angle does that make with the top. Uh, so we have theta, we have x, we want to know y. Which of the trigonometric functions relates theta to x and y? Tangent. All right. So if we were to look up, measure this angle, and look up what the tangent of theta is, whatever the value, maybe 26 degrees or something, it's going to equal some number. That number is the ratio of y to x. We know x, so we can solve for y. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So, yeah. So here's an example of it. At a point 123 base, uh, feet from the base of a flagpole, the angle of elevation to the top of the flagpole is 26 degrees, 47, 40 minutes. That's pretty amazing uh, that they got it that accurate. Find the height of the flagpole. All right. Whoop. There we go. So they take, you take the tangent of that number. You can plug it into your computer. You can look it up in a, in a table, right? Uh, and it's going to equal the, the ratio of the height of the flagpole over 123 feet. So solving for A, A equals 123 times the tangent of 26 degrees. Your calculator would tell you that is about 62 degrees. It's 62 feet. You guys following this so far? Molly? Lock? No? no. Good. All right. But we have to do it without a calculator. Lawrence, you're going to have to do it without a calculator. I, this is going to be painful, folks. It's going to be painful. Oh, right. Good kind of pain. I was taught, I, I was told you have to memorize this insanely, insanely long thing to actually be able to function. We are going to, we no, you're going to make a table. We're going to do it by making a table. You're going to make a table of sine, cosine, and tangent values. And you're going to make that table experimentally. We are going to go out just like the Greeks and figure out what the values of these are. We're going to take string and rope and we're going to do it just like the Greeks. And once you've done it, it will be in you forever. Uh, yeah, you have to do it without a calculator. Yes, I'm so cruel. You'll have to construct the table of values for the trig functions. Oh my god, OMG. Not more trig and grit. Yes, indeed. So here's our mission. Recreating the sine, cosine, and tangent functions, all in the service of getting the height of the flagpole, uh, using a rope, a tape measure, and a goniometer. That's really what you have. And uh, two, four. So uh, who is lonely right now? You are. Yeah. I don't know. Who's, what's Hufflepuff's natural ally? Or, yeah, you're Hufflepuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably, probably Gryffindor. Gryffindor? Yeah. yeah, okay. Hufflepuff can, can roll with Gryffindor. Um, so, oops. Yeah, this, this is your job. What do you guys think? How would you do this? If I were to just say, I'm done teaching for the day, and kick back, and let you guys and say, the rope is over there. <laughs> wow. Wait, what? The hem. What? Do you not know the dance part? If I were to send you out in to the yard out there, 
with I have a bunch of rope, I've got some flags, I've got tape measures, tent stakes, string, goniometers. How would you uh, build a table of sine, cosine, and, tan and tangent functions? Well, if we just find the links, we don't need to know that it's like we can do that. If you have, the, no, you need to know the angles, right? Because well, that's the whole point of this. Size, right? That's the whole point of this. We need to be able to say, okay, 26 degrees, what's the tangent of 26 degrees? Well, like if we have all these sides, then we can. You can figure out the angles from if you have all three sides. Uh, how, how do you do that? Say that again. Are you hungry? No, but I'm not. I'm like I have some. I have some beef. No, I don't even like steak. <laughs> no, <laughs> I just felt the need to share about you. Remember that one time? That you had in the bottom of the year, yeah. and then you were giving it to us. Yeah, I'm just like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, just your old dried peaches from Dr. K. They were good. <laughs> they tasted good, didn't they? Yeah, no, it was good. Yeah. I mean, it's not the beets are really bad. good. I'm impressed. Yeah. Um, all right. Not again. All right. Here, here's our mission. You guys, you guys want me to? Give you some clues. That would be nice. Yeah, you, yeah, you were just, you were really gonna send us that. I kind of wanted to. Listen, it's laptops on lock. I kind of wanted you, you to just like hammer it out for a bit. Uh, one possible way. One possible way. Use a rope to make a Cartesian coordinate system using nothing but a piece of rope. You can do it. How would you do that? We'll come to that in a moment. Yeah. What's your thought? Yeah, but how do you make sure that it's actually squared? Just um, Okay, how does that work? No, I don't know. <laughs> Knowing what you already know now today from our lecture, what did I talk about? What's the one thing I three, wanted? Four, five. Three, four, five. What is oh, three, four, yeah. five besides three consecutive oh, integers? Of course, oh, wait, uh, wait, oh, 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 it's not actually angle measurement. We'll get we'll get to three four five. It is literally my next slide. Um, but yes, the three four five uh, is how you could do it with a piece of rope uh, using a tent a tent spike, a rope, and a spray can. You could draw a circle of fixed radius uh, starting at the origin, right? Just like a giant compass. After you get your Cartesian coordinates. Uh, you could create a right triangle using ropes and spikes uh, at uh, various points P around that circle and measure the length of uh, X and, and Y, right? And then measure the angle and write that angle and that ratio down in your book and you will begin to build a table of sine and cosine. Are you mystified still? A little bit. A little bit. Okay. Well, let's imagine it happens like this. You take a piece of rope, you stake it off here and here. I don't know, 30 feet. Maybe, actually, I would say probably 50 feet so that you can be 20 in here. You want a circle of a radius of maybe 20 feet. Well, that's a lot of rope, man. I don't have that much rope. Yeah. <laughs> No, you, you right now you just want a, a table of tangent and sine and cosine values. So, so the table. Oh, okay, okay. Are you still? So, are you lost still? Um. Well, I don't know what, what is a Cartesian. 
Oh, a Cartesian <laughs> coordinate system <laughs> is just an X Y oh, Descartes. Okay. Yeah, Descartes. Okay. <laughs> so a guy named uh, Rene Descartes was sort of the uh, inventor of modern science, uh, and he famously said something: "Cogito ergo sum." I think, therefore I am. Uh, and that is the basis of all modern science, was cogito ergo. And from there, he, he built out uh, a, a, a science for us. One of the other things that he gave us uh, after the sentence, Mars, was the Cartesian coordinate system. And uh, it's, just, it's just this, the grid. The grid that we use. That's all, that, a Cartesian coordinate system. So you can build a Cartesian coordinate system, basically just two lines that are at 90 degrees to one another, that have, you know, of fixed lengths, right? Uh, you can do that by stretching a piece of rope. Okay, wait, I said I, said I would come back. No, 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 okay, okay, I'll hold it. You can stretch out a piece of rope, put a tent spike there, put another one there, and then get your piece of rope. You can do a three, four, five, so you take a piece of rope, you tie a knot in it, and then and you tie another knot in it at some arbitrary length. You fold the rope over at that second knot and tie a third knot in it in the same distance as the first distance, right? So maybe you have the first knot. You following this? Yeah. So, for example, uh, you could do some sort of thing like this. Let's kind of do this laundry line here. It smells like my garage. Have um, laundry, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right? You could do that. There's a knot. You tie another knot here, and then you take this knot, you stretch it out, see where the first knot was, and then right here you tie another knot. And you do it again. Doesn't really matter how long it is, as long as they're all the same, right? And you do it so that you have uh, three plus four plus five is twelve, and you just do it so that there's twelve sections, and then you take this. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do this here you go. To pull that knot, you would stake that out, and here this is one, two, three segments here, and then there would be four segments, and we someone else would pull that out tight, and then the end of the rope would have five, and you just hold that in the same place, and if everybody pulls out the three corners of this, it's going to make a right angle. It has no choice but to, because it's three on one side, four on the other, five on the other. So that's how you would like determine how to make sure that. And you will need to do that as you go around because you're going to have to continuously make right angles. Sydney definitely doesn't want this thing to go by her. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, this is how the ancient Greeks did it. This is how the. This is how the the. Egyptians made the pyramids. They needed to know how to make right angles, square angles. This is exactly how they did it, with a piece of rope that was tied in lengths that were fixed length. And it's, it's pretty easy to do that, right? You just go back and forth, and you just tie it out uh, as much as you want. And then and you have three people hold the corners of that triangle out. That's a three, four, five. That's a square. All right. Okay, now. Yeah, please. Okay, so when you said you can't use a calculator, are you talking yeah. about. Like, what. Do so you mean. Your so calculator, you could, for an angle, any given angle, you can type into your calculator tangent of 35. Yeah. And it'll spit out some number, which is going to be the ratio of the rise and the run, the, the, the y over the x. It will, it will tell you what that value is. I'm, instead of using your calculator, I'm going to make you guys build a table. Okay, of, wait, can I get it on the board? 
so for five degrees, for five degrees, it's, your table's going to look like this. For five degrees, you're going to make a triangle that has five degrees. So your Cartesian coordinate system, you built out a circle. You're going to take a rope here, stretch it out, and measure it as five degrees or six degrees or whatever with your goniometer. And then you're going to measure this distance and this distance. And that ratio given for sine, uh, for sine, that is going to be uh, r over y. For cosine, it's r over x. And for tangent, uh, it's, what is it? It's y over x. So, okay. So, we know, say we knew this, right? Okay, so we know x, right? So, yep. we know this. Yep. So we know these two. We're trying to find this. Yep. And so, but typically, if you knew like this, whatever, say this was like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Sure. Um, typically, you would like punch this into a calculator, right? That's right. And so, you're saying we can't do that. Right. So okay. you're going to have, I'm making you guys build a table of these values. So this is going to be some number, and this is some number, and this is some number, and then I'm going to do 10 degrees, and another number, and 20 degrees. Because that's really all that these calculators are, are they're doing a, a computation to, to figure it out. But you can originally, the original geometers did not have calculators. They had tables. They had tables of these values that they would look up. They would just look up for 60 degrees. What's the ratio of the rise and the run? And they would look it up in the table. Because if, if that ratio is going to be the same, no matter how big that triangle is, however, you know, however it scales, the, the y and the x are going to be proportional. So for example, if you have this triangle, the ratio of this value, this y over this x, is going to be the same as the ratio of that y over that x. So the tangent of this angle theta doesn't matter how big the triangle is, it only matters what the angle is. Because it's just looking at the ratio of the two sides. And the ancient geometers would make tables and they would look it up for a given angle Okay, what's the tangent? That's going to tell me the ratio of one side of this triangle to another. James. No, no, I don't think, I think that I would be impressed if you could do better than five degrees. Yeah. And, and honestly, all you really need to do is go from zero to 90. And that, that's what, 18 values? values, 18 measurements. Yeah. I think we can do it. I mean, you'll have a table and you'll have done it and you'll actually <laughs> understand what it is. Deeply. Just like the ancient geometers. We maybe we'll make a pyramid later. This kind of thing, this three, four, five, is is how people, how uh, carpenters do this stuff here. It is how they do it. They don't they don't, that's how they figure out the pitch. Most carpenters are not look, looking up trigonometric functions, right? Because that is, they don't even really understand it on that level. This is why most houses have a 3-4 pitch to the roof. Because, you know, a rise of 3 and a pitch of 4. Or a rise of 4 and a pitch of, and, and a run of 3. Because it's easy for them to make these three, four, five triangles, and to come up with that kind of a right angle, right? So that everything is square. But you guys are going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to have you put the build the whole uh, trig table out of string and tape measure outside. Does that sound horrible? It does. It sounds horrible to you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why? 
Like you take a string, you st you spike it there, you tie it to a spray can, and you go like this. And it, it doesn't even really matter. You don't have to be on the circle. It doesn't have to be a circle at all. Because wherever the string, you have some other string that's staked here, you hold it out, you take your three, four, five, and you get a right angle, and then this is the triangle that you're going to measure, right? And then you can just move this string a little bit more, and it'll be right here. And this is the uh, triangle you're going to measure. Meanwhile, you have your three, four, five out there uh, creating the right angle for you with respect to the uh, x-axis. Have I lost everybody? Have I lost anybody? Everybody, it makes sense to everybody? Good. Okay. Um, all right, so we already got this. How do you make a right triangle with just rope? I explained that. Um, I was going to go on a little bit of a tangent here. How do you plan to <laughs> Yes. We're going to do a tangent because uh, we, we squandered the whole class period, and we will start with rope next time. But we'll go on a tangent right now. This, I've already thrown a lot at you guys today. This one, this was for Ashley, that one was for you. Thank you, you're the best. Yeah. Um, it's it's the, the ghostly hollows, right? Deathly, Deathly hollows, yeah. Ghostly hollows. Whatever, the ghostly shoals. Um, say hello to the 345 or the 5, 12, 13 or the 8, 15, 17 triangles. What? Three, four, five. Well, I like the primary color blonde. Yeah, yeah, me too. Big, nice, chunky. Yeah, and say hello to Pythagoras. Is that what he really looks like? Uh, yes, that's a photograph. <laughs> um, Pythagoras of Samos was an ancient Ionian Greek philosopher and the eponymous founder of Pythagoreanism. His political and religious teachings were well known in Magna Graeca and influenced the philosophy of Plato, Aristotle, and throughout the, and through them, the Western uh, blah, blah, blah. Dr. K, you yeah. kind of look like a Greek philosopher. Yeah. With my beard? Yeah. Um, like a like square forehead beard. Ah, uh, probably. I don't know where I, it was like definitely a copy-paste thing. Yeah, that yeah, was the first one. Yep. Uh, so I'll come, in a, I'll come in a toga one time. These are Pythagorean <laughs> triangles. <laughs> triangles, triangles, <laughs> that have right angles in them and integers for the sides. What do you notice about them? For a whopping 10 house points. What do you notice about these triangles? They're all the same angles. No. They have right angles. Yes, not what I'm looking for. Okay. I already told you that. What do you notice about them? There's something in particular I'm asking you to see. I'm hoping to see. What do they have in common? Who's good at noticing patterns? Any of you? What do you think, Dan? Yeah. There is. There's a pattern. There is a very simple pattern. Uh, the totals of all three are divisible by two? Yes! So elaborate upon that. Why is that? That's true. But that's, and I'm, that's, that's pretty close. It's, it is a consequence of the thing that I'm get, I'm trying to get you to see. It's really good. I'll, 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 I'll give you two points for that one. So she noticed that uh, 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 12, it's divisible by 2. 17 plus 15 uh, plus 8 is 40, that's divisible by 2. And uh, 13 plus 12 is 25, plus 5 is also 30, also divisible by 2. Divisible by 4, yeah. Not, not, not 30, but 40 is, yeah. But 12 is not, no. They're all divisible by 2. That's a consequence of... Do you, you guys give up? Well, I... No. 
I only watch it. No, I don't. Fish in. But I don't know it. Well, just, just look at your tip. How do you get, uh, when you add two numbers, what has to be the property of uh, two numbers that you're adding together for them to equal an even number? Two odds and one even. Yes. James? For it to always be an even number, it has to be two of them. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many evens. And at least two of the same. Okay. It has to be a multiple of two of that. So I'll, I'll give you two more points. So I'm like, you're still like right on the doorstep. Okay, I'll, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just show you. It's one leg is always even and the other is always odd. Oh. One is always even and one is odd in these three triangles. Let's let's keep going further. Oh, and there's Euclid too. Yes. Forgot about Euclid. So <laughs> next step. What? Yeah. Look at No, Euclid. His name is Euclid. Here's looking at Euclid. You know, uh, Casablanca the movie. That is like a Old time joke. Like that is an old time I joke. Like, I know. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at your cig, dummy. Because okay. he's like smoking a right, cig and Euclid's looking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> it was, again, for you, <laughs> Ashley. Yeah. Uh, more Wikipedia. Euclid of Alexandria is the most prominent mathematician of antiquity, best known for his treatise on mathematics, The Elements, of which this is a first edition. Uh, uh, specimen. The long-lasting nature of the elements must make Euclid the leading mathematician of all time. However, little is known of Euclid's life except that he taught at Alexandria in Egypt and took a dim view of social cigarette smoking. Yeah. Uh, all right. Euclid had this wicked crazy formula. We're on a tangent here, so we need to pass. Uh, and it was so from the 300 BC that. Uh, he came up with a way of predicting what's called a Pythagorean triple. This is three numbers that will make a perfect triangle, like three integers that will make a, a perfect triangle that has a right angle in it. That's a Pythagorean triple. Super useful to the ancients. Super useful. Um, and a primitive Pythagorean triple is one in which all the numbers are uh, share no common factors, so they're prime to one another. So, for example, three, four, five, they share no common factors except one. So that would be a primitive triple. Whereas six, eight, ten is also going to be one of those uh, one of those triangles, but six, eight, and ten all share a common factor of two. So that would not be a primitive Pythagorean triple. You guys follow that? So he had this, he had this, uh, this formula that uh, the a side, the y side of a Pythagorean triple for any given integers, two integers, m and n, you just come up with two integers, m and n, um, where m and n have the opposite parity, meaning one must be even and the other must be odd. And M and M are co-prime, again, meaning they have no common uh, integer factors greater than one. Um, if this is M and N uh, have this in common, then A is going to be M squared minus N squared, B will be 2MN, and C will be M squared plus N squared. Whew. Let's see how that works. Wait, oh. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to write. Oh, this? Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm leaving that. Yeah. 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 Go for it. This is, this is, this will be on the, uh, the wiki anyways, or on the, on the class site. Yeah. The question is, how do you prove Euclid's formula? How would you prove Euclid's formula? So, he said that you can come up with the complete set of all Pythagorean triangles. All triangles that have integers for the three sides and a right angle in there using this formula where the A is going to be uh, two 
integers m and m, where m squared minus n squared is a, and b is 2mn, and c is m squared plus n squared. How would you, how would you prove that? Slytherin and Gryffindor, you check too. Plug in numbers, okay. But does that prove it in general? I want it to prove it for any number, m and n. How would I prove it for any number, m and n? What do you think? Really? Got any thoughts? Sydney? What do you know? So I introduced Euclid, I introduced Pythagoras. What do we know about these right triangles? The one thing you do know from the beginning. Yes. You know a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Does anybody want to take a stab at it now? Go for it. Puff a puff. Stand strong. You can do it. Does anybody follow what she's about to do? Yep. Cool. Okay. Yep. Plus. Yep. Oh wait. Oops. Not to be. Yep. Me, everybody. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that? I'm the She's got. It. We want to. We want to make you. her. We want to make her do the long math, or should I just yeah. click the button? And yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm on that. I think it's okay. okay. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can do it. You see how that works? Euclid's formula works. And I, I have been heading for this point because this is why I went on this tangent. This is freaking cool. Oh, this part is hard. Let's, let's skip this. We'll come back to this. This would be you proving to yourself that Euclid's formula is real. I, I was going to have you try to fill in the table. Who can do this one? So for m and n, these are our two values. For m is 2. Remember, they have, they have to be opposite parity. So n is uh, odd and uh, m is an even. When uh, m is 2, what is a? m, so what's 2 squared is 4 minus n squared, which is 1, is 3. All right? And then for the b term, it's 2mn. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 1 is 4. And for c, it's m squared plus m, n squared. So 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 times 1 uh, is 5 altogether. 3, 4, 5. What about this one? What would, this, what would that triangle look like? What's, what's the a in that triangle? That was a Hufflepuff. I'm going to give you... Let's give you eight for that one. Who wants to take a stab at that that triangle? James. Five. Yep. Five. Well. Thirteen. Okay. So let's let's think about this. The only reason yeah, it has no faith in you is just to be you are nine minus nine minus <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not five. Yep. Looks right to me. Is that right? I thought that looked a little odd. Yeah, that looks right. 
Okay. Uh, you want to take another stab at it, James? You want to redeem yourself? Hufflepuff just got another three points there. Did you did you see what happened? What went wrong? Let's let's try this one. Let's try this one. I don't know exactly how you did the math wrong, but some, something went wrong. It's, um, so it would be. Is it time to go? No. No, no, no. Oh. I'm just trying to figure out why he did it. Yeah. Oh, that is time to go, actually. Is it? Yeah. yeah. I know it was close. Okay. Oh yeah, just get out of here. We'll pick up there next time.